The main character of today's story is Tamahiko. His life has been considered a fortune since he was born into a wealthy family. Until one day, a car accident took away his mother and crippled his right arm. After Tamahiko recovers from the event, his father sends him to live in a mountainous villa because the old man doesn't accept such a disabled child. His father also buys him a wife as the last favor he would do for his son. One night, Tamahiko finds a little girl on his doorstep, who introduces herself as his wife. Her name is Yuzuki, and she's the one to take care of Tamahiko from now on. The two then step inside the villa. Seeing Yuzuki wearing little, thin clothes, Tamahiko gives her his coat to keep her warm. He doesn't want her to catch a cold. Tamahiko doesn't understand why his father bought him a wife. It's so meaningless as he won't be living for so long. At least, that's what he thought. But after that night, meeting his wife, his life completely changed. Tamahiko wakes up and has Yuzuki help him wash his face. She tidies up his gloomy villa in just an instant. She even mends his old pants, which he's never touched. Due to his handicap, Tamahiko always finds it hard to take a bath. But thanks to Yuzuki, he can now rely on her to scrub his back. Seeing Yuzuki's upset face, Tamahiko can't help but think that his wife is in agony because she was sold here to pay the debt of her parents. But in fact, what bothers her is the great volume and fluffiness of her hair. She's afraid that it looks weird and is too fluffy, so she has to do braids to hide it. For the first time in a while, Tamahiko finally laughs. He laughs because of his little wife's genuineness. That night, Tamahiko suffers from downcasting thoughts again. He keeps thinking of how his family abandoned him after he was injured, which causes him insomnia. So he goes to the living room to calm himself. To his surprise, Yuzuki is also there, asking him if she can stay up with him. She starts talking about her life. Yuzuki is a maiden. One day, to pay the debt of her family, she agreed to be Tamahiko's wife. At first, Yuzuki was a little worried and wondered if her future husband was a nice man. But the way Tamahiko cherished her this morning eased her, and so she thought she'd cherish him and be kind to him as well. Yuzuki suddenly suggests the two sleep together to celebrate their first day living as wives and husbands. Tamahiko mistakes her idea for an intimation and is panicking as he doesn't have any experience in this kind of stuff. So he decides to learn from an adult magazine. But then he's surprised to see Yuzuki take out another futon and place it next to his. Turns out this is how she meant sleep together. She explains that she's just 14 years old and isn't old enough for marriage. If they want to sleep in the same bed, they have to wait until they're officially married. The next day, Tamahiko receives a letter from his father in which the old man tells him that Tamahiko's crippling is the family's embarrassment, so he decided to declare his son died in the car accident and hold a funeral for him. After reading the letter, Tamahiko is drowned in despair and blocks himself in his bedroom. No matter how hard Yuzuki tries to ask him for dinner, he refuses to show up, seeing that Tamahiko hasn't eaten anything for a night. Yuzuki brings food to his room just to find out that her husband is suffering from a fever due to starvation. Tamahiko resigns himself to dying alone. He says it will be better for everyone if he disappears, and that Yuzuki won't have to be his wife anymore. But Yuzuki simply hugs him to reassure her pitiful husband. Yuzuki takes care of Tamahiko until he fully recovers from the illness. Tamahiko decides to take his wife to Tokyo for their first date. All the fanciness of the city dazzles the little countryside girl. Yuzuki can't help but keep acting weird in public. And that's it for a fun but tiring day. A month later, Tamahiko's sister appears at his villa. Her name is Tamako. Despite not having seen her long-distant brother for a while, Tamako shows contempt for Tamahiko right when she meets him. She even teases Yuzuki as a primary school student because of her height. But in fact, Yuzuki is 14 and Tamako is only 12. Tamako triggers her brother by telling him about how his family faked crying at his funeral. And Tamahiko isn't pleased with the sudden appearance of his troublesome sister. Yuzuki asks Tamahiko to go for a walk on the hill to relax. On the way, Yuzuki is thirsty, so she drinks from a small stream, using her hands to cup the water. With one hand available, Tamahiko struggles to drink water, so Yuzuki gives him a hand. Or actually, too, the two create a little bit of an awkward scene afterward. Thanks to Yuzuki being by his side, Tamahiko is less lonely than he used to be. And it seems that Yuzuki is a part of his life right now. Today, Yuzuki makes milk candies for her husband to munch on when he reads books. Seeing the couple eating the fruit of love, Tamako can't stand such a cheesy scene and runs back to her room. A little bit about Tamako. 
since she was little. She's never received any love from her father because work was the only thing he cared about. Tamako grows up being a lonely girl and has no friends at school. While she's trying to put herself to sleep, Tamako is startled by thunder. She's so scared that she wakes Yuzu up to go to the bathroom with her. But while they're on the way, Tamako can't hold it anymore and performs an embarrassing act. Yuzuki immediately takes her sister-in-law to the bathroom to wash her up. And after that, Yuzuki helps Tamako comb her hair for a final neat look. Yuzuki's warm heart makes Tamako regret being rude to her this morning. That night, the two share one futon and talk a lot about their lives. Turns out, Tamako has dropped off school. Under great pressure from her family, she had to leave the house where she grew up, and Tamahiko's villa was the first place she thought of when finding a place to stay. After a while, the two sisters-in-law are getting closer to each other. The next morning, Tamahiko can't hide his shocked face when he sees the girls are merrily making candies together. Only after one night, Tamako's attitude toward Yuzuki changed by 180 degrees. But Tamako still doesn't allow her brother to enjoy the candies with them. The girls are styling some new hairstyles for each other. Tamako is more than excited when she sees Yuzuki's fluffy hair. Due to his curiosity, Tamahiko wants to take a look at what the girls are doing. But Tamako once again tells him to stay away. While she is fanning for Tamahiko, Yuzuki suddenly feels dizzy and collapses into her husband. So Tamahiko tells her to lean on him for a little rest. As she's feeling alright, Yuzuki intends to go back to work. But she quickly passes out after a few steps. Despite being sick, Yuzuki still tries to guide Tamako on how to cook today's meal. Seeing that Yuzuki's condition is getting worse, Tamako decides to summon a doctor. In the meantime, Tamahiko tries to help by getting water from the well, but it's surely very hard to carry a bucket with one hand. After a while, Tamako comes home with a doctor and his assistant. The doctor tells them that Yuzuki is in a bad state because of overworking. He also scolds Tamahiko for making her do so many house chores. The next morning, as Yuzuki is feeling better, she wakes up early to prepare breakfast for everyone. During the meal, Tamahiko and Yuzuki are surprised to hear that Tamako is about to leave this place. She plans to become a doctor. It turns out that when Tamako saw Yuzuki get ill, she thought if only she was a doctor, so she decided to learn medicine from an uncle in the city. But her ultimate reason is to marry a nobleman. That night, Yuzuki suggests everyone sleep together before Tamako leaves the next morning. Tamahiko stays silent while Tamako and Yuzuki are talking a lot about their plan. But when the girls are asleep, Tamahiko looks at his sister. He remembers that among their siblings, Tamahiko and Tamako are the most alike, so he quite regrets that the two haven't known more about each other sooner. All of a sudden, Tamahiko pats his sister, but soon he realizes that his action is pretty abnormal. The next morning, Tamahiko and Yuzuki accompany Tamako on the way to the train station. When the train is about to depart, Tamako tells her brother that she knows all about what he did to her yesterday night, making Tamahiko blush. In the package Yuzuki gave Tamako, there is a lot of food and a medical book with the note read to stave off boredom. Tamako can't stop her tears of happiness when she recalls how her brother and sister-in-law have changed her life. Back to our main couple. As he's worried that Yuzuki will get sick again, Tamahiko follows her to the market, and the two happily go shopping together. That night, Yuzuki makes a feast to celebrate Tamahiko's birthday. She gives him a bookmark with Kikaiu flowers on it as a gift. Tamahiko is deeply touched to receive his wife's gift, as since he was born, no one has ever made a birthday party for him. Suddenly, they hear some strange noise in the house, so Tamahiko goes to check around. He sees a strange girl sitting in his room, reading something. This girl is Ryu, she lives in a village down the mountain. Tamahiko is shocked as the girl has found the adult magazine he hid in the drawers. The girl that approaches him saying that if he wants to experience such things, she can help him. He doesn't need to read those kinds of magazines. But she quickly hops out of the window and escapes in front of Tamahiko's eyes. Tamahiko tries to cover up what just happened when he realizes that his wallet and the bookmark Yuzuki gave him are nowhere to be found. He immediately figures out that it was Ryu that stole his stuff, so he quickly chases after her. He only needs to get the bookmark back, as it's the first gift he's received from Yuzuki. After a while of looking around, Tamahiko eventually finds the girl's house. But it turns out that her alcoholic father has forced her to steal things. He can't help but turn his back on her when seeing her father slapping her, as it reminds him of his tragic memories. The next day, Tamahiko comes to Ryu's house again, determined to take the bookmark back. He knocks on the door, but there's no response. 
so he decides to go to the other side of the house just to find Ryu and her little brothers bathing in the backyard. Tamahiko eventually has a decent conversation with Ryu. He asks her to give him the bookmark, which is really important to him. Ryu accepts to give it back under one condition Tamahiko has to teach her brothers kanji. He has no other choice but to tutor the boys. But while he's teaching, Ryu's father comes home, so Tamahiko has to leave by the back door while he hasn't got his bookmark back. The next day, Tamahiko decides to tell Ai everything about this incident. But to his surprise, Ryu is at the front door, meeting Yuzuki. Ryu teases Yuzuki by saying she is Tamahiko's side chick. She takes out the bookmark and says that it was a gift from Tamahiko. Tamahiko tries to explain everything to Yuzuki, but she just stays unheard and tears the bookmark apart. At this point, Tamahiko knows that Yuzuki is very angry with him. That night, as she goes into Tamahiko's room to tell him dinner is ready, Yuzuki sees her husband fall asleep on the table. Next to him are pieces of the tattered bookmark that he was trying to join back. Tamahiko also apologizes to Yuzuki for what happened, but the actual reason that Yuzuki was angry was that Tamahiko didn't tell her the truth about the stolen bookmark. But Yuzuki is still not very pleased to see Tamahiko knowing such a beautiful girl like Ryo. Tamahiko doesn't understand why he's happy when Yuzuki pummels him. It is early in the morning, but the couple is having a somewhat sweet moment. But they're interrupted by Ryu's brothers. After one day of studying with Tamahiko, the boys told all the kids in the village about him. The kids want Tamahiko to teach them more. Tamahiko is considering their request when Yuzuki has already set up tables for the kids. Not over yet, Ryu also shows up after almost burning his family. Ryu takes Yuzuki to the kitchen to make some food for Tamahiko and the kids. She also apologizes to Yuzuki for bringing trouble to her family. But she doesn't forget to tease little Yuzuki that she'll be Tamahiko's second wife. As time goes by, the couple's love is nourished every day. Tamahiko and Yuzuki have a great time together. Tamahiko also learns to help Yuzuki in everyday work. One night, Yuzuki tells Tamahiko that she's turned 15, so she can now officially be Tamahiko's wife. And of all the time living with Tamahiko, Yuzuki has been very happy. Touched by Yuzuki's confession, Tamahiko gives her a kiss, but the two quickly find it awkward. The next morning, Tamahiko sees Ryu's younger brother waiting for him. He wanted to thank Tamahiko for helping him in his studies recently. He found a job as a hired laborer and can no longer continue his studies. Seeing that, Tamahiko could only watch the boy leave silently. That night Ryu went to ask Tamahiko and Yuzuki about her younger brother. She can't find him anywhere. After a while of searching, Yuzuki found him in the warehouse. Ryutaro cried and said that he did not want to work as a hired laborer because he would not be able to see Ryu anymore. Tamahiko said that hard-working workers will be rewarded with days off, and they and their families can go to Tokyo. He advises Ryutaro to work hard and take his family out to Tokyo. At this moment Ryu came and hugged Ryutaro. She said he might not need to work anymore, but Ryutaro said he wanted to work as a laborer. The next morning Ryutaro prepared to go to work and promised Ryu that he would try to earn money to take his sister and children to Tokyo to play. Hearing that, Ryu was very happy and encouraged Ryutaro. Ryutaro said goodbye to everyone happily and the other children continued their studies at Tamahiko's house. Today is the fifth time that Tamahiko has sent a letter to his father that he wants to go to school. However, he did not hear any response from his father, which made him very sad. At this time Yuzuki received a letter from Tamahiko's uncle, named Tamasuk. Uncle Tamasuk says that Tamako told him everything, and that he will support Tamahiko to go to school. Tamahiko took out her phone and called Uncle Tamasuk to confirm. This made Tamahiko very happy and he started studying hard to get into high school. Today the children in the village gathered at Tamahiko's house because today a famous singer Katori came to Chiba Station to perform. So they invite Tamahiko to go with them to Chiba Station to see Katori perform. Her clear voice makes people fall in love and warms their hearts. Just a blink of an eye made the children in the village flutter. After hearing Katori's voice, Tamahiko tells Yuzuki that he's glad he decided to come here. After returning home, Tamahiko continued to study hard. Finally, the high school entrance exam took place and it seemed that Tamahiko did very well in the exam. Everyone congratulated Tamahiko on entering high school. Today is Tamahiko's first day of school. Yuzuki sees Tamahiko looking cool in his high school uniform. Tamahiko has a good height so she easily attracts everyone's attention. Today there are two transfer students, the first is Hakaru and the twin brother of singer Katori. Hearing that, the boys immediately wanted to become his brother-in-law. Next is Tama, but it seems like everyone is very skeptical about his family. 
while Hakaru was surrounded by people chatting closely. Tamahiko was completely isolated by everyone. During gym class, Tamahiko only had one hand so he had a hard time changing and was late. So the whole class was punished, making everyone hate Tamahiko even more. At lunch, when everyone left, Tamahiko took out his bento box. He cried because he was touched by Yuzuki's concern. In art class, the teacher asked everyone to draw someone they like. Hakaru went to Tamahiko and saw Tamahiko drawing Yuzuki. But he drew so poorly that Hakaru burst out laughing. However, Hakaru's drawing is just as bad as Tamahiko's. Both are very bad at drawing but they don't want to admit it. The teacher saw their two drawings and immediately scolded them because they were bringing shame to the art industry. The two decided to go to Tamahiko's house to continue their drawing competition. When she learned that Hakaru was Katori's older brother, Yuzuki was very excited to bring him a cake. The two started their own drawing competition. After a while, Tamahiko went to the kitchen to get tea. Yuzuki asks him how his first day of school was. Tamahiko said that the first day he went to school felt very happy. The learning environment was very good. The classmates were very sociable and kind. Hearing these things, Yuzuki shed tears because she thought that Tamahiko finally had an ideal place to study. In Tamahiko's mind, he knew these lies very well, but he wanted Yuzuki not to worry about him. Hakaru stood behind and heard everything and just smiled. The two of them drew their own pictures until late at night. After looking at each other's drawings they saw that they were terrible. Hakaru asks Tamahiko why he lied to Yuzuki. Tamahiko said that it was necessary. Hakaru says that he doesn't need to lie anymore because he just needs to turn the lie into the truth. While Tamahiko was bewildered, Yuzuki called them to dinner. During the meal, Hakaru complimented the food while eating and said that Tamahiko was a very good friend. He promised to stop by his house often so he could have dinner with him. The next day, Hakaru brought his younger sister Katori to Tamahiko's house, making Yuzuki extremely excited. Katori's purpose in coming here is to want Yuzuki to teach her about love. Katori says that she is collaborating with a magazine for young girls. Recently, she received a few questions from fans about love. Through Hakaru's story, Katori knew that Yuzuki and Tamahiko were in love so passionately that they both blushed. Katori wants to use music to comfort girls who are having trouble falling in love. Seeing Katori and Yuzuki happy together made Hakaru feel a little sad. After Yuzuki arranged a room for Katori, Hakaru asked permission to go home, and Katori would stay here to get inspiration for her work. All the romantic actions of this couple, such as washing, changing clothes, or eating, all were stared at by Korori. Katori told them to act as if she wasn't here. The children went to Tamahiko's house to study and saw Katori, surprising them. Seeing the children surrounding Katori, Tamahiko decides he will let Katori teach them today. Katori teaches everyone to sing, and Ryu and Yuzuki also join in. Looking at everyone singing happily, Katori recalls the memory of her and Hakaru singing together. Today, a friend next to Tamahiko forgot his pencil. His friends around him also didn't have any other ones. Hakaru reminded Tama, so Tamahiko took out a pencil and gave it to the friend next to him. He happily accepted Tamahiko's pencil, making Tamahiko teary-eyed. Hakaru took out one of Tamahiko's adult magazines and showed it to everyone. He said that he got it from Tamahiko's house, making the boys extremely curious. On the way back, Hakaru asked Tamahiko about Katori's situation. Tamahiko says that Katori has been having fun with the children these past few days. Tamahiko invited Hakaru to his house, but Hakaru refused. Meanwhile, Katori wants to know about the first time Yuzuki and Tamahiko met. Yuzuki said that when she first came to take care of Tama, she felt very worried. But seeing Tamahiko's extremely warm actions makes Yuzuki sure that Tamahiko will cherish her. Hearing this, Katori says that Yuzuki and Tamahiko's love is very similar to her love for music. Katori Riley says that the first person who loved music was Hakaru, not her. While changing his clothes, Yuzuki asked him how his day at school was. He said that today he was reading a book with his friends, but he didn't say what book it was. He says that it seems Hakaru is avoiding Katori, and Yuzuki says that the first person to like music is Hakaru. During lunch the next day, Hakaru took Tamahiko's best piece of fish, making him angry. Tamahiko asked Hakaru, Did something happen between you and Katori-chan? Hakaru said that as a child, he loved music before Katori, and Katori often sang with him. But he was seriously ill and needed a lot of time to heal, so he gave the guitar to Katori. After seven years of treatment, Katori has become very famous. Hakaru had no other way to keep up with Katori. The promise between the two to sing together when he recovered from his illness was also not fulfilled. 
Hearing this, Tamahiko understood Hakaru's feelings. Tamahiko shared that, after he had an accident, he just wanted to die quickly. But Yuzuki opened his heart and made him find his ideal of life. Hakaru seemed to have understood something and guessed that Katori was still waiting for his heart to open. Today, the children eagerly announced to everyone that Katori would perform a new song. But before that, there will be a special character who will sing a song for everyone. It's Hakaru with the guitar. He took a deep breath and started singing. The clear voice and guitar sound made everyone extremely excited. Katori recognizes this as the song she and Hakaru used to sing together when they were children. The girl had tears in her eyes and went up on stage to sing with Hakaru. The joyful applause made both of them extremely happy. At this moment, both of their smiles appeared again. Next is Katori's new song, which makes everyone extremely excited about love. Tamahiko and Yuzuki listen very attentively to Katori's song. On the way home, Yuzuki wanted to share all her thoughts, but she was too shy. She said she wanted to learn how to ride a bicycle. Tamahiko says no need for that. I can take you everywhere from now on, just like this. As usual, Tamahiko helps the children study in his free time. Seeing Yuzuki attentively reading the letter, Tamahiko guessed that it was a letter from Midori to Yuzuki. Midori was Yuzuki's best friend when they were in middle school. While reading the letter, Yuzuki blushed and felt shy. It turns out that Midori is pregnant and about to get married. Although they are too young to get married, this is also something to celebrate. In the letter, Midori wrote that she would move to her lover's hometown in Kyushu. But if she moved there, it would be difficult for her to see Yuzuki again. So Midori asked Yuzuki to meet one last time in Tokyo, where she and her fiancé were working. Tamahiko tells Yuzuki to go see Midori. But Yuzuki worries that if she goes, no one will take care of everything in the house. After a bit of persuasion, Yuzuki agreed to go to Tokyo to meet Midori. Tamahiko takes Yuzuki to a shrine to pray for the health of Midori and her child. Seeing that, Yuzuki told Tama, let's come here when we're expecting our own baby. Tamahiko went to greet a monk and returned with an amulet. He tells her to give it to Midori to wish her good health. On the day Yuzuki left for Tokyo, she said she had asked Ryu to take care of Tama. Ryu agreed because her younger siblings also bothered Tamahiko a lot. She also adds that she will become Tamahiko's concubine while Yuzuki is away. The two were about to kiss when Tamahiko realized they were in a crowded place, while Yuzuki was also blushing. After arriving in Tokyo, Midori came to pick her up. They went to a cafe to chat together. Midori said that she was pregnant before getting married, so her family complained a lot. But her lover kneeled down to apologize to her family, so they accepted him. Yuzuki gave Midori the amulet to wish her and her child good health. She also talked about Tamahiko with a blushing expression. That afternoon, Yuzuki went to Midori's apartment, and the two of them cooked together and talked until the evening. Midori asks Yuzuki if she wants to have a child. Yuzuki shyly answered yes. Midori said that she was willing to take Yuzuki to Kyushu with her, but seeing Yuzuki happy by Tamahiko's side made her feel very secure. The next morning, they went for a walk together and reviewed their past memories. They wanted to play together before the train came to take Yuzuki back. Meanwhile, Tamahiko is being cared for by Ryu, and he is looking forward to Yuzuki's return. Suddenly, there was an earthquake that caused everyone to fall. The village suffered heavy damage after that earthquake. Tamahiko wants to help people, but the people here look down on him and tell him to step aside. He watched the village collapse and worried that Tokyo would collapse as well, making him very worried. He thought for a moment when there was a noise in the next room. It turns out the cat knocked down the cabinet in Yuzuki's room. Tamahiko sees a bag and a letter. She planned to give this scarf to Tamahiko on his birthday. She wants to go everywhere with him on the bike. Tamahiko decides to go to Tokyo to look for Yuzuki. He is determined to find the smile of the girl he loves. He left a letter saying, If you are back, stay here. I'll return in about a week. While walking on the road, Ryu and the children blocked his way. Ryu wants to go with him because she wants to know what Ryotaro's current life is like. The children said that houses had collapsed and the elderly and children were sleeping outside. Hearing that, Tamahiko told the children to call everyone to his house. They can freely use the food in his house because his house is very sturdy. Tamahiko and Ryu then set off together. That evening, they stopped at a temple to rest. Ryu criticizes Tamahiko's rice balls for being so bad, but she can feel his feelings in this. They continued walking and saw many collapsed houses on the road. When they arrived in Tokyo, this scene shocked Tama. The city has completely collapsed. Tamahiko shouted loudly for Yuzuki. Tamako suddenly appears, calling Tama. Seeing Tamako safe, Tamahiko was happy, but he was also exhausted and fainted. 
He was taken to the Tokyo train station because the hospital was overloaded. Next to him is Ryu. The two then continue on their way to search for Yuzuki and Ryotaro. Tamako also wanted to go with them because she was also really worried about Yuzuki. So Tamahiko and Tamako will go find Yuzuki while Ryu will go find Ryotaro. Together, they went to nearby clinics and saw people frantically searching for their loved ones. The two became frightened and could only paste a notice looking for Yuzuki on a stone statue. They continued searching, and they heard that many people from other places had died. Tamahiko was extremely scared. If Yuzuki died, he wouldn't want to live anymore. Tamako holds Tamahiko's hand, saying that if you die, I won't forgive you. She burst into tears and said that she also wanted to find Yuzuki. They continued searching and saw a girl standing on the bridge. They thought she was going to commit suicide, so they ran to stop her. The girl said that she had a child in her womb, so she would not think about suicide. Looking at the talisman in her hand, Tamahiko recognized it as the talisman he had given Yuzuki and learned that the girl in front of him was Midori. She said that during the evacuation, people were pushing each other, so she lost Yuzuki. When she woke up, she found herself lying in the infirmary. She apologizes to Tamahiko for inviting Yuzuki to Tokyo. Tamahiko asks about Midori's child and encourages her. He will handle the rest. He tells Tamako to take care of Midori while he continues looking everywhere for Yuzuki. He suddenly encounters Hakaru and Katori singing to boost everyone's spirits. They also prepared charity meals for the people here. They also gave Tamahiko a meal and encouraged him to try to find Yuzuki. Just as he was about to eat, a little boy rushed up to steal his food. But the boy's sister couldn't run fast enough and fell. The boy brought the food back to Tamahiko and begged him not to hit them. Tamahiko says you can have them, out of my respect for you protecting her. The little girl said that a girl with them was fainting and that girl's name was Yuzuki. Hearing that, Tamahiko rushed inside, and yes, the person in front of him was Yuzuki. He asks the two children to go to Hakaru and Katori to ask for their help while he tries to bring Yuzuki to the infirmary. Yuzuki dreams of her mother comforting her as a child. When she grew up, she didn't want to see her father living in debt, so she sold herself to help her father pay off the debt. When she first met Tama, she was scared, but when she saw his warm actions, she was sure that Tamahiko was really a kind guy. She vows to stay by Tamahiko's side forever. She remembers the happy memories with Tamahiko and the memories of being separated from Midori. Then she accidentally saw two children crying, so she comforted them. She also suffered from exhaustion and fainted. When she woke up, she saw Tamahiko calling her name. She burst into tears and pulled Tamahiko down to kiss him. Everyone around blushed and looked at them admiringly. Tamahiko tells Yuzuki that this is not home. Yuzuki looked over and understood the problem. Everyone started to have fun again because they finally found Yuzuki. Tamahiko took out the bowl of porridge, and Yuzuki opened her mouth with the intention of asking Tamahiko to feed her. Tamahiko also understood what she meant, so he fed her porridge, making her extremely happy. Right now, when Tamahiko's father arrives, he wants Tamasuk to go with him to save his eldest son, Tamaki. But Tamasuk says he no longer has anything to do with the Shima family. He can't quit his job here just to save one person. He sent Tamahiko's father a business card for a medical facility and told him to call them for help. When his father was about to leave, Tamahiko ran up and said, I'm glad you're all right. However, he still left with a cold expression. After that incident, everyone came together to help and rebuild this place. Today, everyone gathered at Tamahiko's house. The girls cooked while the boys went to the hot springs. After Tamahiko went back home, he saw that the children were here to celebrate his birthday. Tamahiko sends his thanks to everyone. He thanks the children for holding up their end of their promise. He thanks Tamako for becoming a doctor. He thanks Katori for her songs, which provided so much encouragement for his transfer exam. He thanks Ryu for joining him along the uneasy road to Tokyo. He thanks Yuzuki for being alive. He thanks Hakaru for being his friend. The next day, Tamahiko took Yuzuki to a small shrine on top of the mountain. The girl confessed her feelings for Tamahiko before God. Tamahiko also said that he would cherish her. The two kissed together in front of the temple. 